everybody. Uh, Send the break here. Um, I'm going to be doing a short video today on the Roland Anandi and its battery and taking out some keys. I uh, also want to say a big hello to my friend Andy. And we shall get started. Now that I turn the interrogation light on, you see better. And here is our victim, the awesome Roland Anandi. Okay, so first off I'm going to uh, talk about the battery, and uh, the battery is this keyboard uses, it's the uh, CR 2032, and you can get those at Radio Shack or Walgreens, any kind of electronic uh, place. Mm -hmm. I'm going to set the computer on the keyboard so I can get closer to it, get a better view. Right here is where the battery is. Oh, the talking clock. <laughs> Anyways, here's the battery right here. And um, this actually just uh, has a little spring inside. It doesn't require any soldering, which is really nice. Um, it just has the spring loaded battery. And you can actually just put pressure on the left side of the battery and push it into the spring and then just pull up on it and it'll snap right out of place. Um, I'm not going to take this one out uh, because it's brand new. But I will show you the basic uh, explanation of it on this uh, circuit board here. This goes to a Yamaha DX7. I mean, a uh, W7 uh, circuit board, so it's not the same thing, but it's close enough. Uh, on the A90, the battery kind of fits in place, like this, this one does. And if you use the spring and pop it up like that, and pull it out. So, that's the basis of how it works. Some batteries are more confusing than others to remove. The uh, D50 is an example of a difficult battery to take out. Anyways, okay. So that is the basic uh, explanation of the battery uh, in here. Uh, these two wires here you don't really have to undo because they're really not in the way. Um, this is kind of a tight spot here because there's these little, I'm not quite sure what these are, but these little components here that are right next to the battery. So it can be kind of tricky to get this out carefully. Anyways, uh, the next thing we'll move on to is the uh, key removal. Um, this isn't terribly hard, it can be kind of confusing in the beginning, but uh, it's actually quite easy to do. Uh, for those of you that don't know, these keys are weighted, uh, actually quite heavy, which are really nice. Uh, they have lead weights that are here uh, in the bottom of the keyboard, or the keys. And uh, there's these little tabs here. Uh, so each key has two tabs. Um, and the only thing that you need to do to remove it is to put a screwdriver inside the center of both tabs and put pressure uh, on it uh, to the key, uh, put pressure on it towards you, and then kind of move the tabs uh, to one side or the other and kind of move them to where it disconnects from the uh, metal rod that's under here. And the easiest way to take it out um, you have to pick up this side first, uh, the side that's farthest away from you, and then pick up the bottom half. And there's the actual key itself. And also, um, there is quite a bit of grease inside these keys. Um, the grease obviously helps the keys not stick and keep the hammer moving really well, even after all these years. So it is quite messy, so it's a good idea to have a paper towel or something so you can get the grease off of you and clean the keys too. And, uh, the black keys are the same. I'm going to remove one of these now. Put a lot of pressure on the sides. Pick it up. And here's the black key. Put that down. And I'm going to take the weight out for the white key. And here's the weight for that. And the uh, the lead portion is down here at the end. Um, and sometimes these can break, but it's very rare. I've only broken one in the 14 years that I've had this keyboard. I only broke one of those weights. So it's a bad deal when that happens, but they can easily be replaced. And this weight is for the black key. So they're actually quite different. They're, they're not exactly the same. The white key 
the weights for the white keys are actually more rounded looking, and this is more straight of a design. More of a uh, right angle design. Okay? And also the weights are going to be smaller. So if you take every single key and every single weight off this key bed, which you can do, I usually do that once a year, um, the uh, weights for the white keys are going to be bigger and heavier, and the black keys are going to be smaller. So it's kind of a good way to separate them so you don't have to you know, sort it all out when you're trying to put them back on. Lots of grids in there. And it's a good idea to dust this out because there's going to be a lot of dust, fibers, and stuff that's settled in over the years. Because the grease uh, kind of makes it a little bit messier. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this back in. And you just kind of drop it in. The easiest way to do it is to have the um, rounded part of the weight uh, facing away from you. And you just drop it in to its spot. The black keys, I've always found they're a little bit harder to get the weights back in place. Okay, and that'll snap in place. And the white key. And you always need to have the around the side of the weight facing away from you. And just drop it in. And kind of thread it through the other hole where the end of the weight will go through. And the white keys don't tend to snap in place, but the black keys do. I don't know why that is, but that's just how they're, they're sized. Uh, and once you have those in, a good way to make sure that you have it in all the way is to put some pressure up here and make sure that you can actually move the hammers uh, before you put the keys back on. And to put the keys back on, I'm going to get this one cleaner because there's quite a bit of dust. Um, the best idea is to put the black keys on first, because once you put the, the white keys, you you know, you can't actually fit the black keys in between them without having to take them out. So, um, you actually just reverse the process where you set the end closest towards you down inside there first. And then you snap the back side of the key in place. Same thing with the white key. Put the end closest to you down in there first. And let it slide down in place. Snap it. Alright. So after you're done with that, I'm going to do to clean some of this grease off of here. And uh, what I normally do is I just play through the keys a couple of times just to make sure that uh, none of the hammers are sticking or, you know, got stuck inside there. But they're all in there good. And that's all there is to it. Um, like I said before, you can actually remove all these keys and all the weights and give it a good cleaning because the grease collects a lot of dust. So if you have any sticking keys or any weights that sound really noisy or rattly, it's a good idea to take those keys off and check it out and make sure that it's not broken or, you know, too full of dust. So anyways, that is the basics of that. I um, hope this made some sense. <laughs> uh, just let me know if you have any questions and I will be glad to uh, answer them. <laughs> and this is the uh, Roland A9DEX.